Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of Minecraft Survival from Python's World. Thank you so much for all of the lovely support you guys showed in our last episode, reaching over 1300 likes, which is beautiful to see. Of course, if you guys want to go ahead and continue supporting the series, the best and easiest way to do so is simply to drop a like on the video. Of course, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future content. And of course, if you want to go one further, use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off when ordering any Apex gaming PC. So it kind of looks like someone's gone ahead and vomited coloured shulker boxes all over the place, huh? That's because the first thing I want to do in today's episode is completely overhaul my ender chest shulker boxes. Because as you can see, we've got all 27 here. I took them out, I put them on the ground. And yeah, we're basically going to go ahead and overhaul the contents. When I say that, most of the contents will be the same. But here's the thing, guys. Check this out. We've got three shulker boxes for end loot. I don't think we need that. I really don't think we need that. So what I've done is I've got a whole new list of what we could put inside of the 27 shulker boxes that are going to be living inside of my ender chest. And yes, the boxes will include the new content that we haven't seen so far prior to this season. So even things from the nether update, the bee update, and of course, the caves and cliffs update. All of that will be included inside of my overhauled list of shulker shulker box contents, ladies and gentlemen. So, I need to go ahead and make myself a cauldron. We're going to get rid of the colours of all of these shulker boxes and basically start again. Well, I say we're going to go ahead and clean all of the shulker boxes and start from scratch, but like I say, a whole bunch of them are actually going to be remaining the exact same. So basically, the first four shulker boxes here, they're going to remain with their colours and remain with their contents because, I mean, why not, man? It just seems like a bit of a waste of resources to go ahead and, uh, you know, do anything else. So there we are, for example. We're got the grass box. It also includes coarse dirt in it because why not? We've got a full shulker box of dirt here. We've got grass. We've got sand and sand related things. We've got gravel. But when it comes to the wood box and upwards, that is where things are going to start being overhauled. So let's see about getting these things cleaned up, huh? So how about it, huh? I bet one thing you guys don't see very often in videos is people cleaning shulker boxes. Yeah. <laughs> I feel unique for once. There we go. Boop. There we are. Nice and clean. Then we rename it with whatever's going to be going in there. In this case, it's going to be a glass. Obviously, we'll sort out the contents a little bit later on. But uh, yeah, this one is no longer going to be a trading box. It's instead going to be a nether box. Yeah. And naturally, when it comes to going ahead and dyeing these various things, we've got glass here. This can be white because, you know, generally speaking, the color of glass is see-through slash white. Uh, caves box, this could be grey for the colour of stone. Other stones, this could also be grey or red or even white for the colour of andesite, granite and diorite, you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, a lot of it just comes down to common sense in terms of colours, like Woodstuffs, brown, foliage, green, etc, etc. So yeah, guys, why don't we just go ahead and get this thing done? We don't need to spend too much time explaining things. And then, yeah, we'll get on with our build for today. The big old library project. Alrighty, guys, so at this point, we're actually pretty much done in terms of going ahead and shifting all of the contents around the various shulker boxes, recoloring them, renaming them, all the good stuff. And now what I'm doing is going ahead and putting more stuff into the shulker boxes from the season four area. So for example, on us right now, we have our valuables box and our gear box. And well, we got a bunch of stuff here that we could go ahead and put inside it. So yeah, why not? All right, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. If you guys are interested in going ahead and trying to replicate this entire system for your own ender chest content, you can go ahead and pause the video at any point. We've got our gravel box, logs box, woodstuffs box, foliage box, Cobble, stone, other stones. We've got our caves box for the 1.18 update. We've got a glass, nether box, end box, winter box. This is going to contain ice and snow and various other bits and bobs. Powdered snow as well, perhaps. Aquatic box, slabs and stairs box, a redstone box. Over here, we've got lighting, food and seeds. We've got a travel box, a bee box, a decorations box, 
potions box, miscellaneous box, gear box, and last but not least, a valuables box as well. If you guys are interested, I'll go ahead and leave a list of all of these boxes in the description down below, okay? If you guys are really interested in trying to replicate this setup, go ahead and check out the description. So yeah, guys, I'm really hoping that this new Ender Chest Shulker Box content system will do us for the rest of the series, because if it does, then I will want for nothing, basically. And to be honest with you guys, I think one of the other things I'd like to do is try to reimagine a very, very old project from one of my very old Minecraft Let's Plays, the Rainbow Shulker System. We would need, of course, 27 cells for it, but basically the idea is we would essentially have duplicates or backups of all of these here boxes. You'd press a button to dispense the box to you, and another box will be dispensed in its place, ready to be filled with whatever we need. So, yeah, when it actually comes down to it, we could have ourselves an insane amount of storage. We really, really could. I mean, even for now, we have an insane amount of storage. So, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed about it. We've got quite a lot of leftover stuff, though, guys. <laughs> We're going to need to organize all this stuff as well. Oh, God. But for now, though, friendos, we have ourselves a whopping great build to begin on and hopefully get done in today's episode. The massive library build. That's right. Oh, snappers, we're actually going to try and get that done today. Oh, I'm excited. So let's get started, shall we? So time to get this thing underway, ladies and gentlemen. Now, remember, I am wanting to put like a little bit of a cobblestone wall around here to sort of enclose the tower of the Pythonator right there. Uh, but yeah, we can go ahead and make a bit of a start with this thing anyway. Way. Now, in terms of the dimensions of this new build, believe it or not, it's actually a perfect square. It is 21 blocks by 21 blocks big. Oh yeah, we're going big scale today, my friendos. And to be honest, like any other medium to big size project, it's all about trying to find yourself a bit of a rhythm, isn't it? So, let's maybe go one, two, three. This could be the wall to enclose the tower of the Pythonator, and then maybe a couple more blocks further as well. So, that'll be one, two, wall, one, two, uh, build? Or maybe three, and then build. Yeah, I want this place to be nicely spaced out, ladies and gents, just because I feel like that'd be a nice thing to have, really. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we are going to be going with in terms of size. Now, here's how it's going to work. All of these little bits of glowstone on the floor are going to represent where the villagers will stand. The planks represent where the lecterns are going to stand, all right? So, yeah, we've got seven on each sort of row. So one, two, three, four five six seven there's another seven there another seven there and we're gonna have two more rows of seven one above here and one above here and then on the back side there's gonna be like a row of chests for all of the various trading resources you can get in the game well for librarians anyway and i've already run out of glowstone ha! ah good job python oh free leads Thank you very much. All right, what do you got there, buddy? Spruce saplings, nautilus shells. Now, ordinarily, I'd be excited as heck to see this, but uh, I, I should probably show you guys something, huh? Uh, where is it? Miscellaneous. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of nautilus shells already, guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah, now that we have Silk Touch and, more to the point, Elytra gathering glowstone should be way the heck easier. Oh, hey there, buddy. Ha oh. Uh-huh. You knew I was gonna kill you, huh? So you decided to take the coward's way out. Oh, mama! That's a lot of glowstone. Possibly the biggest deposit of glowstone I've ever seen in Minecraft, period. <laughs> so much! Yeah, just over two stacks of glowstone from this area alone. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good going. <laughs> so, all of these bookshelves here, the many, many stacks that we have, they are finally actually going to be put into use, ladies and gentlemen. What they're going to be doing is basically separating the various villages apart. And, yep, using bookshelves because I just feel like it's the most natural thing to do. I mean, you know, it is a library at the end of the day. There's got to be books. You can't have a library without books. I'll tell you what else as well. You can't have librarian villages without a lectern. So there we are placing all of these bad boys in. Hey guys, do you want a nice slice of absolute accidental perfection? The entrance when you look out of the library here, you can see the sunrise. Eh? Hey? Hey, so we can come down from our tower in the mornings, head into the library, look out and see the sun rising. I mean, come on, that's pretty cool, right? 
<laughs> Alrighty, so initially I was thinking of putting barrels in the spaces where these chests are going. In fact, on my creative test world, that's exactly what I did. But the reason I'm not going to do that here, because, you know, barrels are the workstation of fishermen. I imagine they would prioritize what's on ground level first, but, uh... Better safe than sorry, right? <laughs> the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, we actually have... Where are they? Decorations box. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> yeah, we got loads of item frames. Because each of these chests are basically going to contain the enchanted books that you can get from each of the villagers. So, say, for example, this guy over here is the mending guy. This chest up here would have mending books and maybe whatever books he so happened to has as well. And on the item frame, we will go ahead and put... I don't know, a book for a mending trade, or maybe a pair of boots on display if it's a boot related enchant like Death Strider, or maybe a helmet on display if it's something like Aqua Affinity. You know, I'm trying to be as organized as possible. So when I come into the library here, I can literally just see from the item frames what the trades are going to be. So as I mentioned, there is of course going to be a second level of trading. So these bits of glowstone here, once again, will represent where the villagers are going to go. And then, once again, we've got a bunch of lecterns. Now, remind me, are we still able to open the chests? Yes, we can, because these are not technically a solid block, right? So, yeah, that is rather cool. And then, as I mentioned, the top level at the back end here uh, is going to contain a bunch of storage. Because, you know, we need to have a place to store our emeralds, right? That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Already starting to look like a fully formed library, isn't it? Oh, man. I can't wait to have this build done, dudes. It's going to look absolutely glorious. So, in terms of the walkway for the second level, instead of using the really thick, cumbersome slab, I'm actually going to use trap doors because I figured they look kind of nice actually and I think they go quite well color wise with all of the bookshelves going on. I mean this is going to be a very very woody type build so I feel like this is only natural right? Oh hey there little chicken. Are you going to be our first resident in here? Hmm. <laughs> Look at this dude. Come on, get out of here, man. I'm busy, dude. So there we are, guys. We got ourselves a bit of a way to actually get up to the second level of villages here, which I think is lovely. At the back here, I was kind of thinking maybe we could have like a little bit of a crafting area. Not entirely sure what exactly we'd be crafting, but, uh, you know, probably a good idea to have a crafting area anyway. And in terms of the chests there poking out, we can simply go ahead and just put trap doors over them. I mean, really? Trap doors are incredibly useful in building, like in so many ways. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, because it's me, we can't go ahead and forget to do this. We can't forget to put flower pots in, okay? So at the back here, I've made some nice little areas where some flower pots can go. Yeah! <laughs> Alright! Who says that I've forgotten how to be king of the flower pots, eh? I mean, I think this is pretty smart. Instead of having a larger area here with the trap doors, I decided to put an upside down stair so we could still access that chest from beneath. I mean, we can even access it from here if we really want to. But a stair here to put a little flower pot there and it'll just add a little bit more color to the build. Guys, this is really starting to take shape and I cannot wait to have it done! Hey guys, how about it, eh? A little bit of water to spruce up the build. Dude, that looks so good though. <laughs> oh, look at the chicken going towards it immediately. He actually is inside of a pod. Well, okay. Apparently, we've got chicken librarians in this game. <laughs> All right, so these dark oak trapdoors, or chocolate trapdoors, as I like to call them, the function of these is to go ahead and add fences on top, which is why they are sat very, very slightly lower than that of the spruce trapdoors, right? We go ahead and get all of these things in, and then, yeah, we've got ourselves a nice little bit of protection, so we don't just wind up walking off. All right, so we're starting to get a little bit of an idea as to how the front is going to be looking. King, and rather similar to the Tower of the Pythonator, we will be having creeper face windows. Yeah, it's going to look absolutely marvelous, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, we could probably 
make a little bit of a start on them right about now. So at this point, we know how to do creeper windows pretty darn easily. So we go up like that. We need to put ourselves in a little bit down there. A little bit of white here. A little bit of white here. This is going to be the nose. That'll be one of the eyes. That'll be two of the eyes. And then we simply add some more white on top. And yeah, this is the height that we're going for in terms of the windows. We're going to have ourselves a whopping great big doorway, ladies and gentlemen. Like, really, it's going to be a big doorway. I mean, a big doorway to a big library. It seems only natural, doesn't it? You see? And just like that, the library of the Pythonator is up and running. Well, not really up and running, but yeah, you can now see that it's owned by, you know, yours truly. It has my face on it. <laughs> I mean, you can't claim a build any clearer if you tried. Alrighty, guys. Of course, we can't have a library without an enchanting setup, eh? So we need to go ahead and make ourselves an enchant table, get ourselves right back down to the library, and make ourselves a big old enchant- Oh, yeah! Oh, my- Oh, my God. I genuinely thought that was a ghast. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I genuinely just had some serious flashbacks from the last episode of my UHC playthrough. Shout out to that, by the way. If you guys haven't been watching the Ultra Hardcore series, you should probably check it out. Oh, I swear to God, my heart actually just jumped into my mouth. I mean, come on. When you look at it like that, they look like gas legs. Do they not look like gas legs? That is... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> so then, with that scare of the century out of the way, we can get on with getting this enchanting setup underway. That actually kind of rhymed. All right, pretty awesome. <laughs> so in terms of this enchanting setup, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have it slightly elevated because at the end of the day, it kind of is the main focal point of this entire build. I mean, obviously, equally, the focal point is the fact that we're going to have ourselves a one-stop shop for every single top-tier enchant in the entire game. But at the end of the day, to have a place to actually do some enchanting to begin with is a good thing indeed. So the idea with this is that it's basically going to be like an enchanting hut within the hut, if that makes any kind of sense. I'm honestly terrible at explaining things. I apologize about that, but hey-ho, you guys will get the idea in the finish. You really will. So I'll tell you what, why don't we just go ahead and get it up and running, and you guys can see what it looks like once it's done, eh? So in terms of this central enchant area, I've designed it in such a way that, yes, you can still get level 30 standard enchants on here, but at the same time, with it being on sort of a plinth, we've got plenty of space to do other things. We can place down more bookshelves all over the place just to give it a little bit more depth to it, which I think is always a good, good thing. Uh, now, obviously, when it comes to up top here, we need to make sure there's at least 15 bookshelves so we can get ourselves the level 30 standard enchant. So here we go. If I was to basically just put down bookshelves just in the corners here, believe it or not, that should do it because in each corner, we've got six. Six times four is 24. So actually, we've got a hell of a surplus in terms of the bookshelves for our level 30 standard enchants, eh? And uh, yeah, guys, all we need to do now is add a little bit of a roof to this thing, and I think we will be on to a winner. A winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so there we are, ladies and gentlemen. We've got ourselves the whopping great enchant area sort of centerpiece here done. And I'd say it's looking pretty good. We could probably add a little bit of foliage here and there just to sort of spruce up the build. Obviously, we've got the floor to do as well. But what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is begin on a third level. I mean, I figured I'd go ahead and make this into a semi-modern type library in that we're actually going to have a little bit of a garden floor. I mean, we'll have some seats and tables, and there's going to be nature all over the place. It's going to look absolutely marvelous, guys. It really, really is. So, how's about we go ahead and get a start on that? And guys, look at this. This is like a proper little vantage point. We can look upon the entrance. We can do our little video intros here. Hey, this is a cool area. I really like this. So, check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Bit of a progress update. We're at the top of the enchant centerpiece, and now we can have a bit of a 
walk up to the garden here. Now, the idea with this is every now and again, there'd be like a little tables and chair set and then we'd have like little pathways roaming through this area with little plants all along the place. I'm thinking things like double tall rose bushes, sunflowers, basically all of the double tall flowers because it adds a little bit of height variation to the area, which I think would look absolutely beautiful. Now, I have just come up with a bit of an issue though. The grass blocks are directly above these chests here, which is why in my creative test world, I used barrels. But as you guys know, I was kind of fearing that the villagers would take on the barrel as their workstation as opposed to the lectern. But... I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel like we might be safe with barrels. I feel like we'd be safe with barrels. I really do. I really, really do. I guess there's only one way to find out, isn't there? We go ahead, we put the barrels on, and then we see what happens with the villagers. I mean, obviously new villagers, not these ones, because they've already been traded with and therefore have their trades and professions locked in. But you guys get what I mean. All right, let's give it a go, shall we? Oh, that was interesting. That uh, item frame. Oh, huh. Well, the item frames don't seem to immediately pop off, but they sometimes stay. That's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> Flower pots! Flower pots everywhere! <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of flower pots, my dudes. So what do you think then, guys? Next thing to do? The ceiling? The roof? Yeah, probably a good idea, isn't it? So how's about we go and get on with it? It's going to be sort of a curved roof whereby it's going to start off quite steep at the end here and then sort of come up to a point. Almost like a semicircle. Yeah, that's the idea. Oh, yeah. So that is the sort of shape of roof that I am looking to do, ladies and gentlemen. It's a big old tall roof, isn't it? So it's going to mean that there's plenty of space on the inside. It's going to feel nice and airy and large. We could put large lantern chandeliers as well. Guys, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Now, here's the thing, though. What we're going to be doing is we're actually going to have ourselves a bit of a sunroof as well. So largely speaking, this roof is going to be made out of glass not wood not cobble glass Alrighty, guys so here we are we've got ourselves a whopping great window and once again there will of course be a creeper face put in the window as a little bit of decoration we've got some plant boxes for the exterior here just to sort of break up the wood textures a little bit and all in all this thing is really starting to get that. We're getting close to actually getting this thing finished now, ladies and gentlemen. And then obviously after that, the grind really begins, doesn't it? We try to get ourselves one of every top tier book trade that exists within Minecraft. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. So the roof is now in place. We've got ourselves a bunch of glass. So it's basically like a sky roof, which is lovely. And on the interior, this is what it's now looking like. Yeah. Feels nice and airy in here, guys. Fan freaking tastic. All right, so let's go up to the garden level because now we have the task of trying to get the windows in. The big windows. Now, at the edges here, I kind of thought that I'd just do like a random pattern. Not really any reason to do this pattern aside from it just being, well, random. Uh, but hey ho, we've still got something going on. Just a little bit of something like that. So basically, we're going to wind up having this pattern on both sides and there we have it the front entrance is pretty much there now ladies and gents oh dude this is so cool we're so nearly done now i want to get a couple of lantern chandeliers done maybe smooth off the ceiling just a little bit and maybe get the rooftop garden done here as well well not really a rooftop garden but top level garden whatever you want to call it son of a gun hey this is my library. No one else's. No one else's. I've put my freaking time into this thing. It's mine. I ain't having no one come through and try and rob me, eh? All right, so a little bit of a crisscross floor going on. We've got ourselves a bunch of foliage up at the top garden seating area, including all of the seats as well. Look at it. Looking rather marvelous, isn't it? Got some sea lanterns for a bit of modern lighting up here. We've got our chandeliers going 
going as well. Guys, this is looking absolutely fantastic. I think the only other thing I want to do here is add some red carpet onto the floor as if there were a little bit of a pathway that will lead you all around the place here. What do you guys think? I think that would be a nice idea. So let's get some red carpet and let's get this build finished and we'll be done for today's episode. And by having this thing done, ladies and gentlemen, we can have a bit of a serious long goal in that we will try to capture a librarian and have each of the 35 top tier enchanted book trades as a trade. And yeah, this thing will officially be done from there. But obviously, that's probably a long way off yet. And yeah, we've even got the exterior done. Instead of going ahead and putting flowers in the flower beds, we just put long grass in there. I thought that could be a nice thing to do. I mean, you know, green and brown, they complement each other quite well, I would say. And besides, we've got all of the flowers pretty much on the inside, haven't we? Obviously, we'll go ahead and add the flowers to the flower pots, probably between episodes. But largely speaking, for now, this build is is done. And I can't tell you how happy I am to say that, my friends. Oh, snap. It's taken a long, long old time to get this thing done, my friends. Lots of resource gathering, lots of building. But I tell you what, guys, is this place not looking marvelous? Huh? It looks fantastic. I absolutely adore it. Obviously, any hints, tips, feedback, suggestions, always welcome in the comments area down below. So yeah, guys, that will just about wrap it up for today's episode, though. Thank you guys very much for watching. Of course, we'll do the comment of the day just before heading off. Nezredoops says, I know it's not part of the season 4 area, but I'm looking forward to eventually seeing what the original Flora Fields will look like when it's finally complete. Absolutely, buddy. I'm very, very excited to carry on with all of the projects I've got going on on my world right now. I mean, we've got the season 4 Flora Meadows area going at the moment. Going strong because I've got all of the inspiration. Oh, yeah, it's a good time when I feel like that. But uh, yeah, absolutely. In future, we will get on with every project that we've got going on in our world. Expanding Python Industries, finishing Flora Fields, doing all sorts of other stuff, guys. There's so much stuff still to be done in this world. It's absolutely ridiculous. It really, really is. That's the benefit of having multiple projects at a go at one time, isn't it? If you get bored of one project, you can always go back to another one or even start a new one. So yeah, thank you so much for that comment there, buddy. I really appreciate it. So for now though, my friends, thank you very much for watching. The only other thing to mention is next episode is actually going to be episode 225 in total. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, every 25 episodes, I do a world tour. And in the case of the next episode, we will be touring everything that has been done since episode 200 in total. So strictly speaking, that actually involves heading back to the season 3 area of the world and touring some of the stuff that we've done there as well. And the other thing to mention is if you guys are looking for a complete, total, full world tour, the next one will be episode 300 in total. The last one, of course, that was done was episode 200. So yeah, episode 25 50, 75, we will do a tour of everything that has been done since the last tour, and then every 100 total episodes, that will be a totally full world tour, if that makes sense. So obviously, in the case of now, episode 225 will be a tour of everything done since 200, then 250 will be everything done since 225, etc, etc, so on and so forth. Hopefully that makes sense. But I'll tell you what it means for you guys as well, you guys are going to be getting a world download in the next episode. Day. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. So of course my friends, thank you very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode and you haven't already, I'd very much appreciate it if you guys would spend a second to head down below the video to drop a like. It really does help out the video and the channel a whole heck of a ton, my friends. It really does. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Do have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next episode. The Walter episode. Bye-bye.